Chrome OS has been in the market for more than a decade right now. And this laptop marks my first time that's actually using Chrome OS for real. And throughout my weeks with this device, I have gone through such an eye-opening experience that I want to share with you by making this dedicated video only about Chrome OS. So let's begin. So like what we mentioned earlier, Chrome OS is already more than 10 years old at this point in time. And I'm surprised that Google is still keeping this product alive. And as the name suggests, Chrome OS mainly revolves around the Chrome browser itself. However, I think because of how this operating system is designed with touchscreens in mind, it works really well with the touch screens that the one that we have here. So Chrome OS has this bottom bar here that's called the shelf and it's essentially the same as the Windows start menu plus the taskbar. So the start menu is on the left side here, you can see the little dot there. And then if we look at the right side here is where we find the system icons. And this entire taskbar here is actually interactive in terms of both mouse or touchscreen. So what happens is that if we drag it up, it reveals the entire start menu or in a more familiar term that I would say is the app drawer that is found on Android phones. And at the top here, we can see that there's a search bar. So if we tap on it and then we can search for whatever we want. So this kind of search results includes your apps, your settings menu, web searches as well, and it works really fast and snappy at the same time. And if you're more of a keyboard guy, then you can also hit this search button here on the keyboard, which is in the place of the caps lock. And this bar will reveal halfway and then only have the search bar there. And then you can start typing like, let's just say uh, settings. Then there you go. And one thing that I really like is that this entire shelf can also be moved from the bottom here to either the left or right side. So if I can find my mouse cursor right now, so right click here, we can see shelf position, then we can easily place it on the left. That is something that Windows really need to learn on Windows 11. Why did you remove this feature when it's present on previous generations of Windows but not on Windows 11? Hmm. And one thing that I want to highlight though, if you move the shelf to the left side or the right side, the swiping gesture will not work, not even from the bottom. So what you have to do now is just tap on that start button. There are also some touch gestures built into Chrome OS as well. So one thing that I like to do is that when we are in Google Chrome, then we use three finger gesture. Then we can see that there's a piece of light there. I don't know how is it called. But you can see it highlights from the left to the right tabs and then we can switch tabs by just using touch gestures. That is really simple and we can also use the three finger gesture to swipe up or down to reveal multitasking so we can even open multiple different desktops just like what we have on Mac OS and also Windows OS. But the keyboard shortcuts on Chrome OS in general though is kind of funky. So this Chromebook here doesn't have the F1 to F12 keys and there's also no button between the control and out keys. So in the place of the caps lock, we now have the search key that we mentioned earlier, which also acts like the Windows key or the command key. That also means that keyboard shortcuts are completely different. Taking a screenshot, for example, requires us to press Ctrl Shift and this button here. Then the snipping window comes out, press capture, then there you go. And then to actually send this screenshot to someone else, we can actually just, let's just say we go into Messenger, for example. Who's my scapegoat for today? Okay, so this guy is my scapegoat. My screenshot just now is actually saved to my clipboard. What we have to do now is just press Ctrl V to paste it, then hit enter to send. But we can also access the history of things that we have copied to the clipboard by hitting search key plus V, and then this little menu comes out and we can see the two screenshots that I've taken earlier. Just to show you more differences, I'm gonna take another screenshot. Uh, let's just say, this part then when we hit shift v again we can see the first screenshot that we've just taken just now the two previous screenshots that we've taken earlier text can also be added so let's just say hello hello how are you doing ctrl a copy delete this and then we hit shift v again we can see text screenshot 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 that's really handy in terms of features available 
and oh switching between tablet and laptop mode on chrome os is actually very snappy so this laptop does have auto rotation turned on and if i do this then it will automatically rotate to the correct orientation instantly it works on portrait as well and everything just works real fast but I gotta be honest with you, the entire Chrome OS experience is very different compared to Android tablets with desktop mode, like Samsung DeX for example. Firstly, this is a full-fledged Chrome browser where we can install it on Windows or Macs and Linux operating systems. All of my Chrome extensions work with Chrome OS, for example, my Gmail, my dictionary, my screenshot extension, even my adblock extension works here too. That is really important to me because I work, I do my work with all of these extensions in mind actually. And the file manager on Chrome OS is, I would say, sufficient enough for my use case. So when we open up the file manager here, so we can see a total of two different folders. This Linux one is something that we'll get into later. So downloads folder is everything that I've downloaded. Then Google Play files is kind of unimportant for most use cases. And then there's another Google Drive here for all of the things that you have downloaded via Google Drive. I mean, in terms of syncing with your personal account. And overall, I really like how Chrome OS works. Most of the time, I'm just writing scripts for reviews like this or replying to your comments in videos like this one. And I'm pretty much living on the browser anyway. So Chrome OS is pretty much perfect for that use case of mine. And combined with how efficient and snappy Chrome OS is, I can get a lot of work done but the battery barely decreases at all. This is an amazing operating system overall, and I truly wish that it can be installed easily on more devices. You see, Chrome OS runs without any issues on this laptop here because it is made for Chrome OS. At the end of our review for the ASUS VivoBook Slate 13 OLED, we say that we are going to install Chrome OS on that machine and test it out. And I'm going to explore some other operating systems for this type of form factor device. And I am going to try Chrome OS next. Unfortunately, that cannot be done because Chrome OS has some legal issues if you just want to install it on any other machines. I googled around how to install Chrome OS into any PCs and I found out that it's not that easy like installing any other Linux distros. So let's take a step back for a little. Chrome OS is based on Chromium OS and Chromium OS serves as a base whereby it's free and open source and everyone can use it. Chrome OS on the other hand is built on top of Chromium OS with some extras on top. For example, you get the full-fledged Chrome browser in Chrome OS where you can sign into your Google account and sync all your data with it. You can even access the entire Google Play Store on Chrome OS. You can see here, Play Store and you can download every single Android apps and run it on this Chromebook. And for that privilege and those Google Play services to be built into Chrome OS, we essentially have to pay for it. We already have paid for the price when it comes to a certified Chromebook with its price tag. So this situation is actually the same as Chrome browser versus Chromium browser. Android open source project, also known as AOSP, versus the full-fledged Android phone with Google mobile services. However, there is one special case that is called Neverware, a company that developed a Chromium distro called CloudReady that I think CloudReady is a service that converts your PCs into Chromium OS, but it kind of goes in between because it doesn't have Google Play Store, but it still comes with a full-fledged Chrome browser that you can sync your Google account with. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I think there is some special deal going on behind because Google actually acquired Neverware. So the Neverware CloudReady seems to be the best way to get out and try Chrome OS, right? Well, that depends on your use case because Google Play Store may or may not be useful for you. But for me, I do find the ability to install some random apps, for example, like Explore File Manager, and I can transfer files via FTP with other devices, or even native Netflix app so I can download and watch shows offline. Those are only available in the Google Play Store. If you actually buy a certified Chromebook, what you also get is the Linux subsystem. I think it's subsystem within Chrome OS itself. So I did Google around and 
some people manage to install Steam on Chromebooks, but I haven't managed to do so. There's also one more Chromium OS distro that is not related to Google at all, so that means you cannot sync your Google account or anything like that, and that is the Chinese developed Fight OS. But I would say, yeah, that one is a completely different operating system in terms of the services that is offered, so Neverwhere Cloud Ready is still my best bet. But with that said though, why didn't we just install the Neverwhere Cloud Ready into the ASUS VivoBook 13 Slate OLED? Well, that's not that simple because I encountered a lot of driver issues, particularly both Wi-Fi and also brightness control on that machine because they don't work as of now. So yeah, we have to wait for a future version of Neverwhere Cloud Ready for it to actually work with that device and we'll leave that for another time. So yeah. That's all I have to share with you about my Chrome OS experience. So far, I'm really liking this lightweight OS. It does what I want it to do when I'm on the go. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. And if you have any questions or any of your own experience with Chrome OS that you want to share, leave them down in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.